Sup everyone, this is Carrick with ACG and welcome to a video game preview. Today I'm taking a look at a game brought to you by Gearbox and 2K and it's a little gem called Battleborn. While I'm sure everyone wishes this was a Viking mother simulator where you were just shooting out kids giving birth on the battlefield like a bloodier version of Overlord, it's actually not. Battleborn is one part Borderlands, one part Brim into the Gills online competitive shooter, and one part, well, some other stuff, with a whole lot of attitude thrown in. Let's see if this kind of multi-personality situation works anywhere outside of Charlie Sheen. As this is a preview, I'm going to be covering the typical categories like graphics, sound, music, voice, gameplay, and fun factor. But since this is a beta, that means sometimes it just ups and wrecks your shit, so there won't be a score at the end. Remember, this is coming out for the PC, Xbox One, and PS4. Let's do this. As always, if you like the video, maybe subscribe. Graphics are up first. One thing you have to think is this game absolutely loves to throw special effects around. Whether you're unleashing evil spirits across the level at ice golems or sniping bad guys from 200 yards away as that robot dude from Hellboy 2, the fact is the game, up close and far away, looks pretty damned good. The Borderlands style and presentation are there, but for me, much of the animation also seemed improved from the Borderlands and just past titles. And though things didn't always line up when the action got hot and heavy, the varied levels of verticality handled by the characters seems a little bit more organic now than it was when I last saw it, which was many months ago, and certainly more so than the Borderlands titles themselves. Now, the characters are also very unique, easily the most unique in design of any game that I can remember in a long time. If you gave me a Joe Rogan worth of LSD in two months, I probably couldn't have come up with some of these. Pissed off spirit skeletons driving steampunk armored suits? Check. Old men driving electric thrones? Check. Half person, half mushroom biological constructs? Check. Four armed magic users that, you know, actually use all four arms in their animation? Check. And a living piece of sentient ice, simply known as Kelvin. The game really does do excellent characterization. It just knocks it out of the park, with each character not only looking and acting different than the others, but somehow all seeming to sort of come from the same original creation box, meaning they all look organically connected and that art style sort of shines through, like they all exist in the same universe together. Of course, that doesn't mean we don't have some expected characters, and here and there we do, but even they have twists on their actual creation. You can tell a lot of imagination went into the characters. That might actually be one of the problems, but I'll get to that in a second. Speaking of locations, they are excellent. From the multi-overlapping sections of the ice map that almost requires constant movement as no camper space seems safe for too long, to the massive sprawling single player levels that easily feel like mini raids, both in design but also in time to traverse. Absolutely excellent work, and so far I haven't found a single location that I personally dislike. Though that doesn't mean I won't, and it doesn't mean you won't. Now, when it comes to weapons and their animation, they are also excellent. Not only does everyone have completely different powers and attacks, this is what you'd expect, come on, but that can sometimes be a negative because it feels like you're living inside of a digital Jackson Pollock painting as hits, explosion, shield, lasers, gunfire, magic flamethrowers, and robots are all basically mating on screen right in front of you. I liked it, but I can see some people just losing where they are when they first jump into the title. Now, it runs very well. I have a 980 GTX with all the settings at their highest at 1440p, and I'm getting pretty close to 60 frames per second at all times, even while recording. For a beta, not only is that not bad, but for the anarchy, the massive raid bosses and their weapons, and just the huge size of the levels, that's really nothing to be ashamed of at this time. I really would like some improvements on a couple things, like the versions of anti-aliasing they have, of course, just uses FXAA, which I like to call just fucked up anti-aliasing. we really like to see some SMAA in there and some others. When you look at it, they're not going to win any awards for being the most complex levels or being the most cluttered or realistic. But their excellent color use, that smart planning of geometry to really augment gameplay, and the multi-level construction means that people are going to be able to try out a massive number of gameplay styles within each individual level, which is really cool. I like that so far. Sound, music, and voice.
and sound is of first, of course. And my hat's off to these guys for remembering that many gamers spend an inordinate amount of money on their audio systems, meaning all manner of audio settings and styles like nighttime mode and others, as well as the seemingly more and more popular option of switching around the angle of that surround sound speaker, which is great as everyone's home is going to be different anyway. And as you guys know, sound is my thing. Once you jump in, you are going to feel like you're being greeted by a cacophony of sound. But I tell you, what surprises me is that for the most part so far, there's been barely any money sound present, even when the Gatling gun of some shrunken headed Go America characters firing at full speed, whiskey foxtrots dropping shotgun hellos to people nearby, and Toby the evil penguin looking mech creator is dropping bombs right next to you. There's almost no sonic overlap, meaning sound becomes a very, very useful, almost integral part of playing. Enter into a battle, and if you're wise, you know who you're with anyway, and that means by using sound alone, you can identify where enemies are by the sheer fact that they're firing to your right and you didn't enter the battle with anyone, say, using magic. It's phenomenal layering multi-directional sound work so far, absolutely required in these kinds of games anyway, but really well done here. Music. Eh. It's okay. Uh, It's very lightly applied, in fact, and in some main single-player missions, when you actually have that time to hear it, it's barely playing there as well. This is a beta, so that's probably subject to change, or they've just decided not to do it, but for now, it's typical, very layered ambient, so that it doesn't get in the way of the excellent sound work that we see. Now, that's probably the best bet for a title like this, but I was sort of surprised just how lean it was. Voice. (laughs) I love it. Voice is character, and done well, it can solidify a character in your mind as someone you want to play, kill, or team up with. I have to really say I was highly impressed not only by the high level of voice work, but the high amount, and also the humor. I wasn't a huge fan at all of the Borderlands humor within their shooters. I'm not sure why. Here, though, whether in the multiplayer or single player, it fits, and whether you're taunting bad guys or listening to an AI asking what everyone's going to do after he suicides himself because he isn't smart enough to figure out what that actually means, it's just perfect. Every character has their own unique little style and voiceover work, and there's just a lot of it. But Carrick, what if I don't like their voiceover work, you may ask? Well, uh, that's going to be an issue, because for people killing one another, they sure do like to yak. Gameplay. So... Really, there are sort of two sides to this, but of course, you enter it from the same way. The first thing you do is you pick a character from an assortment of about five, with more unlocking and a fairly steady stream as you play, so don't worry about not having enough characters to play. Characters have a primary and secondary weapon attack, as well as a tertiary attack that gets unlocked during missions, and easily enough, the game informs you what kind of character that that one that you're choosing is. For example, simple or Complex, complex, of course, meaning that your skills might require specific timing or situations to even work or at least work better. Very cool outlay of information within the entire game's HUD. Now, each character also has helix skills. These are represented by a DNA helix and usually augment the primary or secondary weapon attack, or in some characters, they occasionally add something unrelated. Skills are upgraded in the heat of battle, but the system's relatively easy, requiring two quick button presses, regardless of the choice you're going to make. Skills run the gamut, and Having played a couple characters now for a while, I can say that though at first they won't play too differently from one another, once you level up in the midst of the combat, they will start to feel slightly different if you don't have the choice to have individual characters on when you're game playing. Before you head out into battle, you also have to choose a loadout, which is a set of equipment that you find by buying loot crates with in-game only credits or by finding those items on the battlefield. As normal, they have various levels of rarity, some seemingly story-based ones as well, I've noticed. Again, no pay to win here that I can see whatsoever. So you have three spots for your gear, and they all do a manner of different things, like adjust reload speed, add damage to your helix skills, and an assortment of other adjustments. The one odd thing here, and it takes a little bit of getting accustomed to, is that equipment is not on when you start a level. You have to actually turn them on by doing well in the battle. Now, that's not a game killer, but it's certainly something that's a little bit more of an adjustment for some of us, depending on the games you've been playing in the past. Now, once you've done that, you jump into either a PvP or a single-player level. First, I have to say that right now, and of course this could change because it is a beta, the game feels absolutely fluid, and the feedback on weapons including recoil, switching, aiming, and leading all feel dialed in. And what's really nice here is whether you're taking the battle up close in person or sitting back and sniping, so far everything feels right, and the buck of a sniper rifle or the rattle of a machine gun already feel like the things missing from Borderlands that are a bit more prominent here. 
Now, of course, you may not have had a problem with Borderlands weapon recoil and feedback, but I think it's just a little bit more forceful in this title. Now, single player levels are massive, taking anywhere from 40 minutes to over an hour to get through, depending on difficulty chosen, skill, and if you kill some of the spawn generators and stuff like that. They're excellent set pieces so far, and the cartoon series-like style of their presentation is both typical Gearbox, but also fitting for what happens within them, which I like that sort of narrative symmetry. PvP has a slim selection, though, of modes. So far with Incursion, where you try to kill the other team's drones before they do, typical capture points, and Meltdown, which is where you win by escorting suicidal minions to their death as they march into the opponent's robotic chipper shredder. Very fun mode right there. Now, regardless what you choose, the game does indeed reward teamwork, both in a defensive mindset, but also in a building and creation mindset, as each level is rife with places where you can spend the in-battle currency that's known as shards and build things like turrets, missile launchers, attack drones, and traps of all kinds. That mixed with the typical defensive and offensive playstyles normally seen, I noticed a couple things here that were either more visible in this game due to the way it's paced or new completely. And this new gameplay style didn't really feel like a subtype of the other two. Now you don't have just the defensive style player or offensive, but a builder. Some people just collect shards and build weapons to back you up. And I can't stress how much of a game changer a couple lasers can be in a big battle. And of course, that's different than your typical support characters because they're there as well. In fact, sometimes I'd end up finishing off a battle in the main area and look up to see where some people were taking more of a constructor role, battling it out for a coveted laser position. And that Layered battle type mixed with the fluid verticality that seems to be within almost all of the levels just feels fresh. Again, I'm not saying it's absolutely new. I'm just saying that this game sort of allows you to hinge on it. Now, whether you win or lose, at some point it comes to an end, and points are tallied for both a thing called command and character levels, as well as a bunch of other unlocks you can do. Now, command ranks or levels unlock things like other characters and gear, while character ranks unlock augmentations, which allow for unique helix skills, so that those who do play this a great deal will see a difference between themselves and a newcomer. It just won't be in the equipment, it will also be here. You also have to figure a game by these guys is going to have a lot of unlocks, and there's a ton of things. Information about the characters, world, almost unlimited equipment, and of course, tons of character titles and other things. Now, here's where I'm actually a bit nervous about the game, though. Right now, what I see is a game with an absolutely boatload of amazing characters that are interesting and really, really fun to play that don't have that many unique places or modes to actually play in. You see, it's sort of this weird funneling. There's a lot of options to experience the single and multiplayer content, but it doesn't seem like there's a lot of levels to really, or modes to really play in. Now, when it comes to the actual options to experience those, you have pretty accurate AI for the most part, split screen local, PVE, PVP, co-op PVE, and even a mode that lets you jump back into a game you were kicked from. Of course, you can't jump into games in progress, which I actually think is a really cool middle ground. But finding that there were only three PVP modes seems relatively light, especially with one being bog standard multiplayer. And with characters that are solidly packed to the gills with unique voiceover work and personality, I am absolutely surprised we don't see some serious branching out here with more unique styles in the PvP modes, even including in the PvE modes, though there is a hardcore style. They do have plans for content later in both free and level pack-ins, sort of like Borderlands with story content, so that'll be really interesting. Also, I was sort of surprised to find out that each multiplayer game type only comes with two maps, meaning six total PvP maps when it starts, as well as, of course, your single-player stuff. And while the single-player maps are awesome, big, and epic, they are also awesome, big, and epic, meaning a huge investment for stepping in. That's complaining that your awesome is too much awesome in it, so it's somewhat less awesome, but I figured I would throw that out there for people who are thinking about possibly getting this game. If you're jumping into anything in Battleborn, it's somewhat of an expected investment. Lastly, I have to say, I was really pleasantly surprised by the AI, both in the handling of close and near battle, but also in its challenge on the harder difficulties. It's not at all unbeatable, but it offers enough challenge that you can die if you're not paying attention, and the bosses, especially some of the later ones, are straight up awesome sauce. Their pressure and hit damage is insane, meaning, really, you have to be on your toes, even if you're higher level with better equipment. Fun factor, and pretty much why you should get this, or not get it. So far, and this is the beta, of course, I'm having a blast. The characters are fun to play as the game is absolutely loaded to the gills with unlocks. There's no pay to win, and the single player content really is super lengthy. Now, why should you play it or check it out? Well, if you liked Borderlands and wanted more, if you like personality, lots of possible complexity within the combat, then it's something you should check out. That being said, 
the game is always online. Now, say what you want about that, hate it or not. It's something you should be aware of if you think about buying this game in the future when reviews start coming out. For me, it doesn't bother me, but I can certainly see why other people would look at that and decide not to get it. I'm going to say this. When I first heard of Battleborn, I was very vocal that I wasn't impressed. I wasn't impressed after I saw it the first time either, and I said that on multiple podcasts on this channel and in multiple different videos. I played it once long ago, and I didn't come away impressed there either, as control was rough and the characterization just didn't feel there. But holy hell, things have absolutely changed. And regardless if once the reviews come out and we start playing this, and maybe even if I review it, regardless of the fact if I change my mind there or if I end up really, really liking it, I have to say one thing that's really nice. It's nice to be pleasantly surprised, and it's nice to see a game actually come out and really shock you with the changes that have been implemented. So anyway, as always, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. Maybe check out Reddit, Patreon, whatever. Peace out.